Good morning. Hey, thank y'all for being here this morning. Let's thank the band. Man, they just get better and better. How's my family this morning? Everybody kind of snug and warm. You know, uh, this week um, I came across this story by Paul Harvey. And I found that pretty unique, especially since uh, I'm a Dr. Pepper fan. And uh, I guess at this point you're guessing that, or maybe you're wondering, how can this possibly tie into a spiritual message? How can he possibly take what we just heard and it can be a spiritual message? Well, Terry and I agreed that this story reveals one thing, that when God closes a door, he opens a better one. Amen? There are many, many references to closed doors in the Bible. The first doors that are known in scriptures are the gates of paradise, the Garden of Eden. And here's where we find where Adam and Eve have broken God's only commandment given to them of don't eat of the fruit in the center of the garden. When they broke that commandment. And because of this, the gates of the garden are shut. And an angel is set at the gate to guard against their reentry. So it's shut. They're not going back in, right? Genesis chapter 3, verse 23. We're going to pick up, we're going to start there this morning. If you join me. Genesis chapter 3, verse 23. So it says, So the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken. After he drove the man out, he placed the, on the east side of the Garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. Now that's a closed door. And it's not temporarily closed, it's closed permanently. Amen? You know, when we were, Terry and I, we go to Branson a lot. We love to go up there and watch the sight and sound up there. They, it's, a, it's a great production. If you ever go to Branson, make sure you put in sight and sound. Go see some of the things they have there. But we went and saw uh, Noah. And that was a, a, a really great experience. Uh, the things that they brought to life, the things they did, it was remarkable. But the thing that stood out to me more and probably impacted more people that were watching that production of Noah was when it came time to close the door on the ship. The, you know, people had been warned. They had been invited to come on the ship. You know, Noah and his family were trying to get everybody they could into that ship because they knew what was coming. But when the door closed, it was too late. And in that, you could hear people just screaming and hollering. The rain's coming down. They know they're in trouble, and they're beating on the door. And they all had the opportunity to walk through the door. But once it closed, they couldn't get in. And they were begging, begging Noah and his family to open the door. They couldn't open the door because they didn't close the door. God closed the door. Man, what an impact. And, it, and we be honest with you, as many times as I've read the story of Noah, that impacted me, seeing it happen live and the screaming and yelling and stuff that was going on, those people trying to get in. And closed doors in the Bible, they can have many meanings, including shame or hiding. But that's not the case in every story. It's not about that. It's not about something to do with shame. It's not about that particular type of mistakes. You know, if we consider this, When God closes doors, look back and thank God. Or look forward and trust God. He closes doors that man cannot open. But he also opens doors that man cannot close. So keep that in your mind when things happen like that. I'm sure we've all experienced disappointment in our lives at some point of some kind. We may have felt like we're doing just what God's calling us to do. We're doing everything that God wants us to do. We're doing it at following him, doing it right. But then all of a sudden, the path we're on, something just gets snatched away from us. Something just stops immediately. And we've hit so many roadblocks 
trying to reach a certain goal that we think God's heading us that way. And we hit those roadblock, roadblocks along the way, and it, it just keeps coming up. They're just one roadblock after another. And there's a multitude of reasons that that happens. So let's take a look at a few, and maybe we can understand a little bit better. A closed, doors, a closed door does not always mean a locked door. Just because God closes the door doesn't mean he locks it down like he did on Adam and Eve. God may just have closed the door temporarily. But it doesn't mean it'll stay closed forever. Sometimes he wants to redirect us to something better. Or something he feels we need more than what we're after at the moment. Or where he's heading us at the moment. So he's going to redirect our direction and he does that with roadblocks. If you remember Balaam and the donkey, the talking donkey. You know, Balaam's on a, on a road to go where God doesn't want him to go. And he's fixing to say things that God doesn't want him to say. So his donkey does not, he's riding his donkey and it won't go forward on the road. And the donkey just keeps stopping. He keeps turning back. And Balaam even beats the donkey. And then the donkey starts to talk. I'd be apologizing to the donkey right then, wouldn't you? But God had put an angel of the Lord in the way, and the donkey could see the angel, but Balaam couldn't because God didn't want him going there because he knew he was fixing to make a mistake, so he's trying to redirect him. And the, as much as he tried to redirect him, Balaam, he wanted to do it anyway. And that's where him and the donkey got in a conflict there. Sometimes God wants to redirect us away from something that's not good for us. It's right here where we must put our trust in God and be patient and wait to see where he's leading us and what new doors may be opened since he's putting these roadblocks up or he's locked the door. And one of the hardest things for us to accept is the things happen in God's timing, not ours. That's the hardest thing for us to accept. Time means everything. God may be using this time of closed doors as the time to prepare us for what he's got for us next. Maybe that season is over. And we talk about seasons all the time. How we run along, we go along and we're in a season of ministry doing this. And all at once that just kind of drops or stops. And it just doesn't move forward at all. God's redirecting us and preparing us through that time for the, for the next step. You know, we've talked about that kind of in the way people grow up in life. My wife, she worked at daycares, you know, all this time. Then we had roller skating rinks. We dealt with kids. God kept putting kids in her life when, and her having to deal with them even when she didn't want to. When we started at the Ellis County Cowboy Church, she didn't want, she didn't want to deal with kids anymore. We sold our skating rinks. We weren't doing that anymore. And they were needing a children's church person to lead children's church. And they talked to her, and she kept saying no. That didn't last long. She was the children's church ministry leader for 10 years. So God was preparing her at that time for what was going to take place down the road. And if you stop for a minute and you think about that in your life, what's God been preparing you for? Because he's been preparing you through your whole life to be in ministry. And you're here today. You're part of the ministry. What God gave you, what gift he gave you, or what direction he's taken with you, he's prepared you. So don't just sit on it. Use it, right? And a closed door may be God putting a hedge of protection around us. Do we ever think about that? If God closed the door, maybe he's protecting us from something to keep us out of trouble. That's what he's doing. Balaam, right? If God closes the door, it may be just because he wants to protect us, keep us out of trouble. Because we often make decisions without him which can be harmful to us. Knee-jerk reactions. Sometimes we just do it. We don't include God. And it can be harmful, and God knows that. You know, it may be just in dating the wrong person. We see that all the time. Bad business. Maybe our financial deals that we could get ourselves in, or even missing an important flight, getting on an airplane. God could be protecting us from things. You know, we've all heard stories about people missing their flights only to find out that that plane crashed. Later, God's protecting. There's a reason. God closed the door. 
And God often protects us by closing doors. Sometimes it's just temporarily to protect us. Temporary. It may not be that God didn't want you to go there. He just didn't want you on that flight, right? He's closed the door at that time, and he's trying to protect you. No matter the reason, God always has our spiritual safety in mind, always, whatever that leads to. We may think this uh, opportunity or decision is an amazing one, and we become frustrating. God made a decision. We think it's frustrating. It's amazing that he made that decision. Why did he make that decision? We get frustrated with it because things didn't work out. They didn't work out the way we thought they would, but we tend to find out later that God closed that door because he had a bigger picture for us that's coming our way. But we're impatient. We can't be still and wait on the Lord, right? Isaiah 41, chapter 10. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Amen. Amen. So God, he, he knows what we need. And he's willing to protect us and keep us out of trouble when we make stupid decisions. Because we tend to do that. And a closed door may simply be a redirection for our own good. We never think about it that way, but it could just redirect us for our own good. We can find ourselves focused on so many projects in our lives, many things going on in our lives, and we lose focus of what's important. We lose focus of everything else around us because we're so focused on these projects going on. I'm guilty of that. When it comes to work and things, I get so focused on these uh, projects, sometimes I forget anything else is going on around me, and you may be that same way. But God, he might be putting up a roadblock or a closed door, on one or more of these projects to redirect our attention back to him. How many times have we started a new project and said, man, I got to get this done. You know, I got all these things going on. I got to get this done, but man, I got to work on Sunday. I got to get this done on Sunday. I can't get to church because I got to take care of this problem. Well, if you keep seeing those projects fall off and God blocking you and throwing roadblocks, maybe you need to get to church on Sunday, right? Because that's, sometimes that's how it works. You know, when I started taking on the church, I made a commitment that I would no longer ever work on Sundays, and I don't. I don't even want to work on Saturdays because that's a day to fish, right? But I don't work on Sundays. And God's blessed me for that. And he'll bless each and every one of you. If you remember, he comes first because you only got the projects because he gave them to you. And sometimes we lose sight of that, and that, that's simple enough to do. But if God closes certain, certain doors right before you, do not doubt him. Don't go complaining to him. Why'd you do that? And worse, don't resist him. Because we want to do all that. Realize that his closed doors are leading you to his open doors. We know this. His ways are always better than ours, right? So why wouldn't we kind of pay attention to that when things just start falling apart, when things aren't really flowing the way they are? I've learned those lessons over and over again. My wife doesn't mind reminding me that you took this on, you went on, you, you did this. So... What's God saying to you? Maybe you should have waited on him. So I'm not exempt, as any of us would be. But we should take comfort from the fact that the true and living God that we know is lovingly redirecting our path to accomplish his will. Amen. Not our will, but his will. Amen. And if we were to consider Joseph, think about Joseph. One day he's with his family He's visiting with his brothers, and they're angry at him. And the next day, he's a slave. That quick, it changed. Did God redirect his path? Yeah, amen. One day, he's a slave, and the next day, he's the governor of Egypt. And God used each situation and each roadblock. He found himself in prison. He found himself with all kinds of problems. 
But he didn't fight God on it. He didn't resist God on it. He just knew those roadblocks were there. So God was either redirecting, right? Which he did redirect his path. But he's also training him in the process, strengthening him in the process. And God redirected Joseph's path several times to accomplish God's major plan in all of it. And it worked out. How about when God redirected Paul's path? <laughs> Paul's on a vengeance, right? And God strikes him blind on the road to Damascus and said, you're on the wrong, you're going the wrong direction, right? So I'm going to redirect your path. And he did. And it was for his will and his glory. And how'd that work out? Great. Of course, Paul didn't have much choice, did he? Do we want to get to that point where we don't have much choice? Proverbs chapter 16, verse 9 says, In their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. This scripture reminds us that man proposes, but God disposes. Whatever the plans of a person are, it is only God that can direct such a person to success. So maybe we forget sometimes why doors are actually closed. Are they temporary? Are they that way? Well, when one closes and you're thinking, well, maybe it's temporary, well, maybe you need to wait. Have you ever done anything dumb in your life? <laughs> I have. One of the most embarrassing times for me is I was looking forward to going to this place and we were going there to eat. I remember this. It was a, a, a restaurant, and it, it's really popular, and they had good food and all. And I really looked forward because I'd never been there. I looked forward to going, and I got there, and I pulled on the door, and it wouldn't open. And I, like an idiot, kept jerking on the door and getting mad and getting frustrated because the door wouldn't open. But there were cars in the parking lot. I thought, well, maybe they're closed. You know, maybe, I don't know, maybe you were here too early or whatever. And then a little old lady walks up and pushes on the door and goes in. Well, what I look like? An idiot because I never thought the door would go in. You don't design them that way, right? So God's probably saying to me, slow down, the food's still there, you know. But there are times that we do things that doesn't make any sense. There are times that God blocks things from us that we struggle with because we know that's what we want, but it's not always what God wants. Maybe a closed door means for us just to move on. Maybe that's what God's saying. Okay, this door's closed. You just need to move on to something else because this isn't right. This isn't where I want you to go. You know, God may close doors temporarily for our safety or redirect us, but also sometimes he just says, no, this door's closed. No, you don't need to go there. So we've got to kind of figure out what it is God's wanting us to do. When an opportunity slips out of our reach or we face disappointment in our life, God may be telling us that it's time to move on. We just need to move on and go a different direction because this isn't the way he wants us to go. And still we'll continue to try to pursue that. What happens when we do that? Usually damage or failure or something along that line. No is never what we want to hear. And often tough for us to deal with, especially for kids. Take a kid in a store, toy store, or down the cereal aisle. <laughs> they don't hear no, right? We're that way when God blocks us sometimes. We have our hopes and dreams set on this one thing that we know we want. Maybe a big promotion. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe a new house or a new car. A new job. But God's plan is not always our plan. Sometimes we have a hard time accepting that. A closed door here may be God telling us that we need to forget about that thing that we're so focused on and move on to something else. Sometimes God wants for us just to move forward because we've stayed in one place so long or we've been going the wrong direction. He just wants us to turn around and move forward. If Wade Morrison had stayed in Virginia and continued to battle against the will 
of this girl's father. He may have never experienced the good fortune he found in the invention of Dr. Pepper if he'd stayed right there and battled with this girl's father and saying, hey, I'm going to do this. This is, this is my will. You know, I'm going to do what I need. But he changed directions. God closed the door for him, sent him somewhere else. And look at the good fortune that came out of it. Now, he did have a little vengeance in that, didn't he? Because he wanted you to remember that, who that girl's dad was. But the thing is, he was blocked in one direction and chose to go another. Sometimes when God closes one door, there's a greater, bigger thing coming that we just can't believe. And it happens. So this morning, let's do a little recap right here. Number one, we know that God closes doors to prevent us from making mistakes. And because a path is clear doesn't mean it's the one God intends us to follow. Just because it's clear. There may be a roadblock somewhere on that clear path. It may not be the one God wants us to take. Sometimes we won't have all the information we need to make a wise decision. So God's going to temporarily block us on that. So God blocks the way right then. Is it, is it a solid closed door or is it temporary? You have to determine that, but don't rush it. Give God time. God knows the whole roadmap for our lives. That's without a fact. So we, maybe we should choose to follow his lead and quit trying to lead him. Number two, God closes door to, doors to redirect our walk. God won't leave a willing servant, and that's what we need to be, with nothing to do. He's got stuff for us to do. Closed doors can result in better fruit, more satisfaction, and greater glory to God. That's, what, that, that, that's a great goal right there to understand. Hey, I, God closed this door, so I, man, I got to get ready. Right? Something better is coming. God closes doors to reveal our faith and build perseverance in us. Waiting for the Lord is hard. It's hard for all of us. But it means we can learn wisdom, patience, and trust in the Lord. And build our faith in stronger in the Lord, His direction, instead of on our own. Number four, God closes doors to buy us time. We aren't always prepared as much as we think to go into a situation. And God may temporarily hold shut an opportunity until he feels we're ready to move into that place or move forward with it. The impatience of human nature is one of the greatest downfalls. To lean on God and trust God's lead in our lives it's tough. A lot of people, you've really got to believe that God's holy word right here in this book, the inspired word of God, is what needs to lead us in everything we do. Quit kicking and screaming outside a door because you're not getting your way. Thank God that door was closed because why ever he, why ever he blocked that door or closed that door, it was for our good. And it was for our benefit, and it's also to bring glory to him in each situation. And even though we've discussed today about the many closed doors, the real message is that when God closes doors, he opens doors for us. And they lead us in the best possible direction we can choose to go. His path for us is perfect. We can't say that, can we? We're on a perfect path. We're not if God's not leading. Because his path for us is perfect. He knows where he wants us to go. He knows what he wants us to do. And if we will choose to stay on his path and pay attention to the roadblocks, the closed doors, and follow his lead, we'll live lives of peace, satisfaction, and bring glory to God in the process. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. We're going to close right here. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. 
and all your ways submit to him, and he will make your path straight. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we come to you this morning, lift this day to you, Father. Just thankful for the beautiful weather today, Father. We just uh, thank you for all the intervention you uh, have in our lives, Father. We do thank you for those blocked and temporary doors that close on us, Father. I pray today that we pay attention to those, that we know you're about to open a door or send us a direction that's so much better for us, that could lead us in a successful way down a path that we would not have followed unless you had blocked the other one. Father, let us choose the right paths. Let us choose the right directions. Let us let you lead in everything we do. But, Father, we're thankful that you love us enough, Father, that you care enough about us that you choose to protect us with those closed doors. Father, this morning, I, there might be someone here that's struggling with some of that. You know, they just not sure which direction to go or what to do. But, Father, I'll say this. As long as we turn to you and face you, and come to you and ask your direction, your leadership, and your wisdom in what we're about to do. Father, we know you make that better for us, that you provide the knowledge and the need that we have at that point. Father, I pray today, once everyone leaves here today, Father, you would protect them, look after them as they drive out of here. Father, we pray for another good week. Father, we pray, we hope this day is good. Father, we love you, we praise you, give all the glory to you. In Jesus' holy and precious name we pray. Amen.